Gabe Newell death threats, the Avengers, lawsuits, jail time for internet trolls. This week kind of has it all. Welcome to the Know It All for October 24th. I'm Ashley Jenkins. And I'm Meg Turney. If you haven't seen the show before, here's how it works. We'll run through the top news headlines of the week. If you want any more background or detail on a story, just click the annotation and we'll take you to the full news update. So let's get cracking. In news that would make any reasonable person slowly shake their head in disappointment, an indie developer landed himself in hot water after threatening to kill Valve head Gabe Newell. The threat stemmed from dev Mike Malbeck's frustration that his game was listed as in early access when in fact it had just come out of early access. Although he did later delete his death threat, which read, I'm going to kill Gabe Newell, he is going to die, Valve pulled his game from Steam altogether and vowed never to work with developer Code Avarice again. Malbec has since left the company and expressed his remorse for the whole fiasco, writing, I don't have the willpower necessary to be the face of a company. If I do continue to work in games, it'll be as an anonymous one of a thousand at some shitty corporation, not the most public figure of a single digit sized team. So, really believable remorse. <laughs> With Malbec out of the games industry, many have wondered what he's doing next, and we have an exclusive look at just what that is. Mr. I, I understand that you have applied for one of the positions at, uh, whatever video game company this is that I work for. Yes, need a new job. All right, great. Well, why don't you tell me a little bit about your uh, experience in the industry? Uh, well, uh, in 2014, I released an independent uh, video game that I made myself. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, that's a hell of an accomplishment. So how did that go? Well, uh, you know, it went okay. Went okay? Yeah. Well, it had a limited release, very limited release. Limited release? Mm -hmm. Limited by what, territory? By time. Limited by time. How long was it on the market? Three, only three. Three, three, three what? Three months? Three years? Three hours. Three hours. Yeah. Your game was on the market for three hours. That seems like a really odd windowing strategy. Why was your game only on the market for three hours? I launched it first day and it was on the front page of Steam. First, wow, okay. That's yeah. so far so good. Yeah. Uh, the issue was the image that Steam used to promote it, it wasn't the right image. Bad news, but yeah, you can live with it, right? Yeah, well, some people can live with it. Some other. I tweeted to uh, Gabe Newell that I was going to kill him. Okay, let me sum up what I've just learned. Yeah. Um, you had a game that you developed uh -huh. that was on the front page of the number one gaming portal on the most ubiquitous gaming platform in the world. Yeah. You didn't like the image they posted along with it, yeah. and so you yeah. threatened... I, I told the guy who runs it that I was going to kill him. And there's no way he could like misinterpret that, like, oh, you know, oh. Make it, like metaphor? No, not at all. I specified, actually, that he would be dead. <laughs> yeah. That seems like a really unnecessary clarification. That's the thing about me. I'm a go-getter. If you hire me, you'll learn for yourself. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, still seems like an odd choice to yeah. do that. Yeah, well, you know, the internet's a weird place. Yeah, parts so. of it are, for sure. Okay. Here's the way this is gonna work. I am gonna give you back this resume and you're not gonna get the job here, uh, but I am gonna tell you that I appreciate you coming in and I would appreciate it even more if you did not tell anyone that you ever set foot in our company ever. You're telling me, you're telling me I didn't get the job. That's exactly what I, that's exactly what I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. I'm gonna kill you. I had a feeling you were gonna say yeah, that. Okay, yeah, you. you can get out now, thanks. And you'll be dead. Yep, once again, not a necessary clarification. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Do you have a knife or weapon in here? Security, yeah. Can you bring all your guns? Thanks. Nintendo announced a ton of new details about the Wii U version of Super Smash Brothers, including an eight-player mode, a Wii U exclusive game mode called Smash Tour, fighter transfers from 3DS to Wii U, a level editor that's really cool, details on how the amiibo figures will work, and how Mewtwo and Ridley will appear in the game. The Metroid boss will be on your side for once, but not playable, and Mewtwo will come later via DLC, and he'll be free for those who have both the 3DS and Wii U versions of the game. They really want you to buy both versions. They're offering soundtracks and everything. Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the sequel to the game that put Achievement Hunter's baby in the corner during an episode of Play Pals, hit Steam Greenlight this week, along with a brand new trailer which touts new features like more rooms, more animals, and no protective doors. Players instead will have an empty animatronic Max to hide behind, so get your nightlight ready, kids, because you're going to need it sometime in 2015. After it quietly disappeared from the Xbox original storefront for Xbox 360, Rockstar has confirmed that GTA San Andreas is getting a full re-release on the console on October 26th, exactly 10 years after its original release on PlayStation 2. In addition to 720p support, it will include a full lineup of achievements and more than your daily recommended dose of smugness, since nothing has been announced for PlayStation yet, even though that's the game's OG console. Presumably, there will be no copy of any kind included this time. 
Details for the November Xbox One update were unveiled this week. Among the changes is the number one fan requested feature, custom dashboard backgrounds. For now, you'll be limited to choosing a color or piece of achievement art, but there are plans to expand in the future. Bios are back as well as locations, and you can now upload game clips directly to Twitter from your console. You may recall a lawsuit by EA stockholders filed late last year in which the plaintiffs claimed EA had deliberately misled them about the quality of Battlefield 4 in order to inflate stock values. In other news, I've got a lovely bridge for sale. It's by far the best bridge ever and you should buy it because I say it's the best. Anyway, a judge has dismissed the statements offered by the plaintiffs labeling EA's hype puffery at best, and apparently corporate optimism isn't something you can sue over. It does seem EA has learned since the craziest statement about Battlefield Hardline is it will work. <laughs> well, 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 let's not go crazy. Resident Evil creator Shinji Mikami said in a recent interview that he doesn't like female characters that are perceived as weak or rely on male characters to see them through difficulty. As an example of this, he shared he doesn't like Rebecca Chambers, a character which has appeared in several Resident Evil titles. Fans were quick to point out that Mikami did write and direct Resident Evil 4, which introduced us to one of the franchise's weakest and most annoying characters in Ashley. So, what the fuck, Mikami? Yeah, what the fuck, Mikami? Leon! You may recall a few weeks ago we sat down for a serious and entirely legitimate interview with Ubisoft's Gerard Gilmott, and he revealed Ubisoft's strategy to pull single player content out of games to put it in day one paid DLC. We were joking at the time, but Ubisoft has detailed Far Cry 4's season pass and it will include a day one season pass exclusive single player mission. Just one, but that's a slippery slope. Being right kinda sucks sometimes. The season pass will also include five Herc Center commissions, a new competitive multiplayer territory control mode, cooperative multiplayer missions, and Yetis, which makes up for a lot, they hope. For a full hour of video game news and discussion, Jeff Ramsey's glorious return to a podcast, and a Sunset Overdrive console bundle giveaway, make sure you check out this week's patch because it has all those things. Oh yeah. Or if esports is your favorite flavor, this week the leaderboard discusses the winners of the League of Legends Championship, and there's more bad news for one of the game's top players. Sorry, Ita Tavkin. Now let's talk movies and TV. Actor Frank Severo, who played the character Frankie Carbone in the 1990 mobster movie Goodfellas, is suing Fox Television Studios and Matt Groening for $250 million, which seems to be the new sweet spot, claiming the long-running animated show The Simpsons based the character Louie, one of Springfield Mafia boss Fat Tony's goons, on his character without his permission or without compensating him. Was he in a coma or something? It's been 23 years since Louie's first appearance in the show, which is well known for parodying celebrities, movies, characters, and pop culture in general. Come on, dude, we get it. Pet tigers are expensive, but lawsuit over parody? God, has Lindsay Lohan been putting something in the water? It's cocaine. She put cocaine in the water. This week, a new Avengers Age of Ultron trailer leak, prompting Marvel to tweet, Damn it, Hydra, before posting an HD version of the trailer a full week before its intended release. The trailer features Iron Man's Hulkbuster armor, the creepiest version of a Disney song we've ever heard, and a good look at Ultron, who will be voiced by James Spader. It also showcases a decidedly darker tone than the first Avengers film, and the movie is set to hit theaters May 1st, 2015. I'm so excited. <laughs> This week, our movie and TV podcast screenplay makes the run-up to Halloween by discussing Cabin in the Woods and how apparently half the company has worked for Fleshlight, which is somehow related to uh, movies and TV, I'm sure. <laughs> it's definitely, if you felt it, it's definitely related to technology, which is, I guess, what we're talking about now. Nice segue. <laughs> Following Apple, Google, and Microsoft's recommitments to strengthening encryption and security for user technology, particularly for smartphones to prevent government snooping, the FBI, not the NSA this time, is getting nosy. FBI Director James Comey wants Congress to update an old law that required phone companies to enable wiretap surveillance, since no one uses landlines anymore, to include new technologies and force compliance into law. However, it seems that he didn't really tell Congress, and those guys want Comey to know they don't have to do shit. Several representatives have responded, ranging all up and down the nope spectrum, from tactfully calling it an uphill battle to just saying it has zero chance of passing. But no one thinks this will be the last attempt either the FBI or NSA will make to overturn privacy.
Penalties for online party fouls are starting to draw the eye of the law following a scandal in the UK in which a 27-year-old model was sent a slew of rape threats via social media. The UK Justice Minister says the government will quadruple the amount of time internet trolls can be sentenced for from six months to up to two years. Hey, Malbec, it's serious shit. You listening? Meanwhile, a woman is facing up to a year of jail time under the new revenge porn laws after she stole nude photos of an ex-boyfriend's new partner and posted them online. Rude. Similar laws outlining the dissemination of nude photos or other sensitive media by disgruntled exes have also been enacted in several other states and will be passed in the UK as well. Forget Ben Gate, a man in Arizona has suffered burns after his iPhone 6 tried to become an Amazon Fire phone. The man was riding in a pedicab when it tipped and the phone in his pocket bumped into a bar, well, jammed really, and the battery popped and caught fire in his pocket, leaving him with a bunch of burns on his leg and hip. Apple has graciously replaced his phone, promised to contact him about the incident, and then silently disappeared, like on my first dates. I love that your dates ended with second-degree burns on your hip. Only the good ones. <laughs> That's all from the Know It All this week. We'll be back same time, same place next week. And be sure to visit us over on the Know for more news and shenanigans every day. Shout out to Super Troopers. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What's so goddamn?